So what if I'm getting a little male attention? You're getting a lot more than a little. Not from anyone that matters. What would you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten? I'm a ten. A ten? Yeah. That's like flawless though. Yeah. Gun to my head and said, spell croissants. I'd be dead. I love this man. And I have to have him. My friend went on a date last night that was so fucking brutal that I had to bring it to TikTok immediately, mostly because it's a funny story, but also as a warning to the women in Toronto that this man is walking our streets, ladies. I'm gonna preface this by saying my friend is very good looking and not insecure. She meets a guy on Hinge and she vets him. They talk on the phone every day for a week. They FaceTime, whatever. And then eventually they decide to go out for dinner. Last night, they go to Myth. Everything's going well, except when they sit down, there's a table of girls next to their table and the guy keeps talking to the table of girls. Gets to the point where every time my friend goes to the bathroom, the guy is over at the girl's table or one of the girls is over at her table. It happens multiple times and one of the girls says to my friend, oh, you're so hot, don't worry about this. Meaning, you're so hot, don't worry that the guy you're on a first date with is talking to this table of girls and at their table every time you take a pee. It's multiple times and then the guy says to my friend, sorry, those girls are just pumping my tires, as in complimenting me so much. Like, eventually he goes, are you mad? And she's like, I just think it's strange on a first date to not just say thank you, ladies, but... I'm on a first date and not for anything, but like those girls are kind of whack too because why would you go up to a table of a girl on a date with a guy and just hit on the guy all night? That's insane. Every time she goes to the bathroom, like go and sit with him or make him come sit with you. Like that's fucking bizarre too. But anyway, they get in a miniature fight, they get over it. He goes, let me drive you home. She's like, okay. Get in the car and he goes, it's so funny how mad you got when those girls were hitting on me. And she's like, yeah, sorry. I think it's crazy you were talking to them. And he goes, you didn't even thank me for dinner. She's like, yeah, maybe I forgot to thank you for dinner because I was too busy wondering what the fuck was going on. And then he brings up something else. Like he's trying to fight with her. And then she goes, you know what, man? I don't even know you. I'm not doing this with you. Just let me out here. They're like on the side of the highway. Like they're at Queens Key and Jarvis. Like she gets out at the Loblaws. Calls an Uber. The Uber takes 17 minutes to come. So by the time the Uber's there, she's like crying. She gets in the car. The Uber driver's like, Oh my God, are you okay? Uber driver literally comforts her the whole way home. Like, it's just like, tell me what happened. God bless Uber drivers and cab drivers. I used to be an Uber driver and the shit people would tell me in my Uber, fucking grown men crying about their divorces. It's crazy. Anyway, Uber driver takes her home, walks her to her door. It's like, don't worry, this ride was on me. Your night was bullshit and fuck that guy. A, never use paying for dinner against someone on, on a date. Just don't go on a date then if you don't like that custom. B, if you need the girls at the next table to gas your tires while you're already on a date with a hot girl to feel like a fucking man i can't help you that's just insecurity and he said to my friend oh you're just insecure like gaslit her no she's not if you, she's the hottest fucking loser can you guess what type of man her friend probably chose i'll give you a hint when was the last time an average guy got the attention of a group of females these females pick the top 10 percent physically gifted males and are surprised that those males exercise their options and see them as one of many she was lucky Dude actually paid for dinner. Most of these chads and Tyrones skip that part and get the bedroom benefits right away. These females on top of demanding the man to be tall and handsome also want him to be charming, witty, and or funny. Or in womanese, a ladies man. A player. Because otherwise, if she was respectful and honest and straightforward, they'd call him boring or too much of a nice guy. So then they go for the tall, handsome ladies man and are shocked when he's treating them like an option. Let's see if anyone in the comments notices. The most liked comment with over 100,000 likes says, Guys will be like, girls have so much drama, and then will turn around and be the drama. Yet, these females seem to pick the drama because every stable relationship they get into, they leave just as fast. How many times have you heard about a female in toxic relationships staying in it for years? So never believe what she says, but what she does. Besides, so-called toxic behavior is actually a man with relationship standards and or a man who doesn't simp. Another comment. Oh man, that is a classic negging move. He knows she is out of his league and is trying to make her feel less than to settle for him. Men ain't shit. How did she get that? The man got hit on during an actual date by a group of females even when they knew he was on a date. 40,000 other females co-signed this stupidity. Also, she ain't qualified for him, yet he moved on because she didn't want to recognize his value. She didn't even say thank you for dinner when the guy could probably live a soft guy era and have females pay for dinner. 
she was faced with a guy having more value and still thought she was better. Another comment with 20,000 thoughts liking it, Homebody literally tanked the first day and then weaponized paying for dinner. I will never understand the male brain. Bro, yep, it's most females in the feminist West who demand the men should pay for dinner. Maybe if she paid for dinner, he'd actually pay more attention to her. Matter of fact, those group of females got his attention because, dare I say, they actually gave him interest. I know you vapid IG thoughts have millions of photos and videos of yourself and think you're God's gift to earth just because some athletes and entertainers are in your DMs trying to fly you out. But even the cream of the crop men want a woman who actually shows them interest and affection. That right there makes her much more attractive and it's what we call girl game. Girl game is doing things to keep a man around and committed. This is why most of these attractive females get smashed and passed and are only seen as fun. Because outside the bedroom, they're as boring as a blow-up doll. This is what being with a Chad and Tyrone is like. These men don't care because they have so many options, yet it's what modern women are addicted to. In case if you can't read the small text, it says, how I remember hearing myself going through a postpartum giving 100% to the person I was attached to, knowing I needed to go. And according to her hashtags, well, that was a long lesson. Hashtag single mom, hashtag postpartum, and some other ones. She's a single mom, by the way. This is what also happens when these females try to baby trap Chad and Tyrone, thinking it'll lock these men down and change them for the better. And these thoughts learned the hard way, they're not going to change because these men really don't want to be with them. This is when reality hits hard, and females like her in the video finally figure out that they were used for booty calls. I wish I could hug my postpartum self and tell her she'll make it through. Be gentle on yourself, it's hard and lonely, but you aren't alone. That's our dating options, gentlemen. Broken females in the West. I'm going through this and not even sure there's a brighter side to things. I'm drowning and he couldn't care less and that broke me. She got alpha widowed, and sadly, there will be some sucker who will try to save this used up female. All the rest of the comments are these broken females who went for players instead of a good man. Matter of fact, they probably cheated on good men for these Chads and Tyrones. I just learned so much from this new doctor and we have two solutions for my crazy eyes. The first one, you guys are going to think I'm actually insane, but it was to add just two units of Botox right here to my eyelid, very close to my eyelashes. One unit here, one unit there. That will help lift that eyelid and open it back up. Second solution is an, um, a prescription eye drop called Upneak, and it is also supposed to help open the eyelid one to two millimeters, which doesn't sound like much, but it'll definitely help. And here's the problem that's happening with this eye. I thought it was from Botox. It's actually because my eye is overcompensating, trying to open bigger because this one is closed so much and it's impairing my vision here. So this one's trying to open wider so that it can see better to help compensate for this one. It sounds crazy that I got two more units of Botox after this, but this doctor who injected me is the trainer of all injectors in the area and is really, really well known and does a really great job. She said that if this were her, it's what she'd do for herself. Wow, she's looking like a robot glitching. That's how fake a lot of these females are. It's kind of creepy, to be honest. And she's got to be careful. There's a point where Botox becomes a black hole and she morphs into a cat woman. That's how desperate these post walls are for attention that they'll risk turning into a freak you'd see at a circus, then gracefully get old. This happened to be me a month before my wedding. I was devastated. I used the drop and got the additional two units and it cured me. Good luck. These females are way too young to get Botox. That's because they're screwing, drinking, having a career which ages them in dog years. These modern women are truly road-worn. Another comment. I'm so sorry this happened to you, but thank you for being so brave and sharing your ordeal with us. You heard that. She's brave, unlike the men who fight in the front lines of a war. You say this will get this. Okay, Peyton will flee. Oh my heck. Alright, so here's the thing, Madeline. Um, if you're going to want to get with Jacob... You're not going to get to him through me. Um, I clearly had a thing for you when I first talked to you. I uh, found out you were in a relationship. Figured, you know, to play, play the slow game with that. Um, and then Jacob walked into the room, and you had a faucet go off in your pants. I mean, it's cool. Everyone has to <laughs> them every so often. They're into someone. That person's into their friend. It just doesn't work out. No big deal. Not worried here. 
but I'm not gonna have you using me liking you to get to my roommate. I ain't doing that. Sorry, girl. That's on you. If you wanna get with him, great. Be my guest, but you're gonna have to put in your own effort there. What a douchebag! The audacity these females have today. Not only do they live life on easy mode, but they also expect you to make their life easier. That dude in the video played it right. I salute him for grabbing his balls and telling the thought no. But back into the video, this deceptive thought is already in a relationship, while she's entertaining other men and is openly being hypergamous. That's how little loyalty she has, because already she can't pair bond. She's for the streets for, for the rest of her life. She can't be a wife, and obviously, she proved she can't even be a girlfriend without jumping on the next potential D.I.C.K. Top comment says, Y'all need to watch her response because this dude literally got so insecure over his roommate giving a girl a cough drop. Suddenly, since the guy didn't cuck, he's insecure. He didn't try to win her or beg for her attention. He told her if she wanted his roommate, she'll have to do it herself. This video apparently didn't go as planned in terms of public opinion, as I thought it wouldn't for at least men, but even other females are not on her side. With comments like, he's not wrong. He's not wrong, LMAO. But he is right. He's right though, so... Why is it his job to be used? Especially for these thoughts who are calling him insecure. Why would he cuck himself like that? This isn't a friend of a friend type scenario. The thought who made the video wasted his time and tried to use him for another man. Finally, someone says it. This girl belongs to the streets. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hey, you guys. So I recently broke up with my boyfriend. And I didn't think that I was going to share this experience or this story just because it's not that big of a deal and it's kind of private too. But I decided to share it because I felt like the girls really needed to hear about this. Um, so there are two major points I'm going to make and I'm going to try to keep this very short. So number one, the way that God has carried me throughout this breakup is really nothing short of amazing and unbelievable usually after a breakup i'm a mess like i've been known to cry in the club over a breakup like i'm telling you days weeks you know and the fact that that has not been my experience this time is only because of god and i've been really trying to get back to my relationship with him first and foremost so that he is leading my relationships from now on number two is i feel like a lot of times when we all see these breakup stories, especially coming from the woman's perspective. It's always like this horror story, like, you know, the stuff that she's been through and what he put her through and all the stuff that she put up with. And we all look at her like, girl, why was you in that relationship? Like, why did you stay? But when I tell you guys that that's not my experience at all, like it just wasn't. My ex was a great guy. Like even after we broke up, still sending me flowers to my apartment, you know, like just a great guy, but for somebody else. And we didn't break up because of anything that he did to me anything that I found out or anything or anything that I did to him we literally broke up because just of small things that led me to understand that this was not my husband and so I needed to make room for my husband by exiting that relationship um but I'm telling you the way that he treated me within this relationship was so good he's raised my standard and you guys know that my standards are already high to begin with but my ex treated me so well in our relationship that it was like if, if the next guy, he's made it harder for the next guy. Because if the next guy isn't coming like my ex or better, then off the rip, you can get to step in. Like, so, you know, breakups don't always have to be this, oh, I'm, I'm learning a hard lesson or I went through some traumatic experience. Not every relationship is going to end up in a marriage. And the ones that don't end up in marriage doesn't mean that it has to be messy or, you know, as long as you're upholding your standards within the relationship, it should be a positive experience. And honestly, my relationship was a positive experience. And I'm telling you, like, I have nothing bad to say about him. And um, we're still friends. We still talk and everything. But um, I just don't feel like the girls hear that often about a relationship that you get out of that has raised, like, raised your standards. That, like, he's treated me so well that like, the next guy is going to be hard for him, you know. So I just wanted you guys to hear that because not every breakup is a horror story. And not every breakup is some hard learning lesson. Some breakups are really because you're just maturing and you want different types of relationships. And you just came to understand, like, I don't see myself mirroring that person, so let's not waste each other's time. And that's pretty much what this was. But like I said, great guy, love him. And yeah, that's it. You hear that, gents? You treat these bedwenches so good, and they'll dump you with even a bigger sense of entitlement because you validated them. That's what happens when you treat 304s like traditional women. Their egos get bigger and bigger, and they think they deserve more and more. 
This is why simps ruin the dating market, because they give these HOEs marriage benefits for just existing. How are you going to compete with that? And this female truly thinks, just because high value men are in their DMs for a hookup, that it means they want to wife her up. But in reality, they just want to bust a nut in her and move on. Cross her off on their bucket list, add her name to the notch count. As the saying goes, you treat her like a queen, and she'll treat you like a peasant. Top comment. This is the message that got the boys in a tiff. What was it that triggered them? And another thought responds, boys are dumb. We all know that. We ain't surprised, lol. These females think it's cute wasting good men and treating them like options, especially after these great guys treat them right. That's why I say in the feminist west, you pump and dump. If that. Save your money and go abroad. Become a passport bro, because you can't overcome this lack of respect for men. It's ingrained into them from birth, even if they're not as rude or outright man-hating like these feminists are. They have zero consideration for men. Another comment. Incompatibility is a perfectly valid reason to break things off, before resentment builds. Well then, why waste the man's time? Why not figure that out in the first or second date? That's the problem with these females, that they use a great man as a placeholder until someone better comes along. This... Once I really gave it to God and became comfortable in my solitude, breaking up and leaving situations has been so easy. The irony is that God gave them these good men, but they move on. And then 10 years from now, when they're single, they'll regret leaving these men and acting like the victim. It's best that the man found out now than getting divorce robbed. So I'll give these females that. She responds to a follow-up. So I've been made aware that the last couple of weeks that the males have hated my video that I was talking mm. about my breakup and I was saying I broke up with my boyfriend, but he was a good guy, treated me well, but he was not my husband, so we broke up. They had a problem with that because basically what they're saying is good enough should be good enough. But let me tell you one thing. Good enough was never good enough for me. There it is. These are the type of women y'all need to stay away from. This is a woman who doesn't have an ounce of humility in her just full of pride and gluttony. You heard what she said? Good enough was never good enough for her. So that means nothing will ever be good enough for her. You could break your back for that woman. It will never be good enough for her. This is a woman who's full of so much pride that she'll never ask, am I good enough for the person I want? She'll never ask herself that. And these are the type of people you stay away from because they, those like, those are narcissistic tendencies. She's, she looks like the type of person that would like just drain and drain and take from you and take from you until she uses you up and then throws you to the side like she did her boyfriend. Because you heard what she said about her boyfriend. He was perfect, did everything for her, still sending her flowers to this day. Used them till she got her fill, threw them to the side. And that's why you guys need to stay away from these type of women. I've seen this girl's podcast before. I've seen clips of it. And when I first saw it, I immediately didn't like her because she comes off so with such narcissistic tendencies, like very self-centered. Everything's about her. She's the center of the universe, very snobby. And like, I thought I was just hating on her because she wasn't saying anything like that we haven't seen anyone else say before. But like, I thought I was just hating. But now that she showed her true colors, then everybody's hating on her. I feel vindicated because now, now I know I wasn't tripping and it, it was her actually. And she also has this one dude that kind of pushes back against her on her podcast. And like you could tell that guy is a weak dude or either she pays him so he doesn't want to go too hard against her so he doesn't get fired. But basically whenever he says something to push back against what she's saying, she basically just steams rolls over him because he can't articulate himself. Like he's not willing to stand on, on his business, bro. He's not, he, he can't debate against her. He just says something and then she's like, no, because this is, and then, and then he just shut up. And I'm like, damn, bro, you gonna sit there and be made a bitch like that? Shit. Go ahead and follow me. Leave a like, guys. Appreciate y'all. You heard it from her mouth. It was never good enough for her. Why? Because it looks like she's being flown out by celebs and athletes. She looks like she got the best of many men over the years. So nothing is going to compare to those experiences. Even the guy physically. How is he going to compare with these pro athletes who are built out of marble, have a six pack and look like a real life superhero, and they're rich and famous on top of that? Top comment. Treat them like trash and they'll treat you like a king. Trust me. This is why I make these videos twice a day, so more men can wake up and not have their life wasted on these broads. They're trash and treating them as such is the proper thing to do. 
Another common. She knew he wasn't her husband, but if God says no, it's a no. Real question, how can you look away? And someone responds, yet she used him for five years. Man, y'all are devils in women bodies to think this way. Exactly. Our problem was not that she moved on or he wasn't quote-unquote good enough for her. It's that she used up half a decade of his life and resources and threw it away like it was nothing. I'm willing to bet the Deceptithought knew from the beginning he wasn't what she wanted, yet she still used him for five years to get the benefits. He lifted me up to the point I raised my standards. And someone responded, dumped him right after. Can't make this up. Really makes you wonder why do anything good for them at all. This is why we have a soft guy era, y'all. If they ain't paying, we ain't staying. Drizzle, drizzle. It's always the unattractive man. It's always the unattractive man. Because he deeply, he doesn't like himself. If you don't feel good about yourself, then you are not nice to others. And men are the worst at it because they don't even have the self-awareness to realize this. Women who may be struggling with, uh, you know, self-esteem issues, we're aware of it, but we smile at other people, we're kind to other people. We don't project our self-hatred onto other people. Right, because women are never men, mean. Don't even, don't even talk to them. And I'm sorry I have to do that. That I have to scan the room, see an unattractive man, and just be a snob that's why we're snobs to you yeah we're not gonna finish the video that was more than enough caption reads i am done giving unattractive men the time of day they have a lot of healing to do they are the rudest and always turn out to be the most bad okay if ugly men are so bad why haven't things worked out for you with the hot guys jokes on her for getting used up by the unattractive men you dropped your crown kings and that's how it's done these females in the feminist West deserve to get played, because I can promise you, like you saw in the videos before, these females have done the same thing to 10 different men. This is the happy MGTOW ending we should get. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, Hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.